Welcome to episode 240, Vinod Kosler, Greatest Venture Capitalist in Silicon Valley, 10 Lessons. This is an outline of episode 240. Lesson number one, don't wait seven years for a phone line in India. Uh, and so, and you've spoken in the past about the importance of failure or the lack of it. You started your first company at age 20 in Delhi which did not work out as expected? Well, I didn't actually get started. Huh. They told me it'd be seven years to get a phone line. How did you react to that? <laughs> Honest to goodness. You know, I was 19 or 20, and they told me it would be a seven-year waiting list to get a landline. I, I, I sort of picked up and t went to Carnegie Mellon. Lesson number two, move, move, move. Vinod's original plan was to be a tech millionaire by age 30. He made tech millionaire by age 26. These are his moves. From India to Pittsburgh, from New Delhi to Pittsburgh, from Pittsburgh to Silicon Valley, and then from CEO to venture capitalist. Lesson number three, failure as a strategy for success. And I like to say my willingness to fail is what gives me the ability to succeed. I find most people are so afraid of failing, they don't try and do the things that would be important enough to do. Anything worth doing is hard. Lesson number four, nobody remembers your failures, only your success. So everybody remembers Sun. Does anybody know a company I started before Sun that McNeely and I started together? Any hands? I do, but I've been researching you for a while now. <laughs> uh, what do you think the company is? Was it Data Dump? Or was yes, it? there was a company called Data Dump we started and got funded three months before Sun. Didn't work out. We started both roughly together. But my point is, people don't remember your yeah. failure. Lesson number five, lots of rejections, no problem. And applied immediately to Stanford. And you've heard the rest of the story. They turned me down a couple of times, but learned that somebody had dropped out. That's why I showed up. Um, but things do work out if you persist. Not always, but I like to say failure does not matter. It's success that matters. And nobody remembers um, what you failed at. Lesson number six, the end is the beginning. He knew he was going to end up in Silicon Valley. My, my green card was the same way. I left the job that had sponsored me, but I still got my green card even though no lawyer would take me. I became my own lawyer. Got my green card without working for while I was at business school. Um, and I did it perfectly legally. I, my strategy there was if I couldn't convince immigration, I'd confuse them, and I did. And they gave me my green card. So number seven, IIT graduates and Indian brain power. He's one of thousands of IIT graduates who've made it big in the U.S. How significant would you say the impact of IIT graduates has been on the American technology revolution? It's far greater than most people realize. Microsoft, Intel, PCs, Sun Microsystems, you name it. I can't imagine a major area where Indian IIT engineers haven't played a leading role leading uh, role a leading role and of course the american consumer in the american business in the end is the beneficiary of that lesson number eight be brutally honest polite is dishonesty and i said the one thing i'll do is not do what others want me to do or be polite which generally means dishonest and why we all lie too much and too often uh, we put this sort of slogan, I prefer brutal honesty to hypocritical politeness on our website because it's a real disservice to people. Uh, you don't have to be offensive to be honest. Um, when I don't like somebody, I, I can't get offensive to, but generally you can be constructive and very honest, and I prefer that brutal honesty because it serves a purpose. The receiver can do something about it if it's a constructive criticism. 
Lesson number nine, you must have a belief system. If I determined something was right, I was going to make it happen. And this comes to, since one of the focuses of this lecture is leadership, I am amazed at how few people have a belief system. What do they actually believe in? Um, I, and, and yeah, it's okay to offend you guys. Um, <laughs> 90% of you will do what's expected of you as opposed to what you want to do. And, you know, I even when I come to an event like this, say, why am I here? Why would I even bother to take an hour of my valuable time? Uh, <laughs> no, it's true. I, I, I have to have a purpose. And my goal is very simple. If I can convert one of you, there's probably 400, 500 people here. If I can convert one of you to follow your belief and have the guts to follow your belief, I'll, have, I'll think of the hour as well spent. Lesson number 10. Progress depends on unreasonable people, so don't compromise. Human progress depends on unreasonable people trying to do unreasonable things. I fundamentally believe in the power of unreasonable people, if people won't accept the status quo, will not compromise, and will try things. But in with premature guts and confidence. And this is really important, because if I knew all the problems we'd run into when we started Sun, any rational person would have convinced me not to do it. And because I didn't know, it allowed me to get started. And I'll come back to thing. These things are self-evident, but it's amazing how many people ignore them. The other thing is, when you're trying these things, it's not easy. It's not comfortable. It is uncomfortable because you're trying to do things that others don't believe can be done. And you are scared. If you're smart, you're scared about all the things. There is no courage if you're not afraid. And so keep that in mind as you vacillate, think about panic sometimes. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.